The Kindly Ones, Book 9 of the Sandman. This is one of the harder ones to rate because there's so much material in it, and I can't really decide whether it's really, really awesome because the best of the story was really, really good, or if it was really, really bad, while the worst of the story was just kind of meh. So I could rate each story individually, but that wouldn't really be easy for me because I, they connect in certain ways and it's very difficult to tell them apart, and I couldn't rate them in issues because that just doesn't work for this story. So I'm gonna have to rate it overall. Like I said, there's a bunch of stories, and obviously the worst one would have to be the story with Delirium. I found it to be impressively bad. I don't know what it was getting at. I could not understand what it was. It felt like fluff. It just felt like fluff because nothing happened. Nothing important happened. Nothing was interesting. It was, it was just delirium talking to people. Um, she met some interesting people for sure, but they didn't do anything. They didn't mean anything. And you could take these stories apart and delirium meets someone that could be somebody else's story. And their story was cool, but delirium was not that interesting. So I don't really know. And then we get the story with Hippolyta and she's really, really cool because her story impacts everything, and it is the driving point of this thing. The beginning of it really sets us up for just the idea of how how much the story will affect her. And it does, it delivers that it does affect her in so much, but the way it affects her is kind of dragged on for a long, long time. And while it's affecting her, we go through many periods of different plot points, and I'm not exactly sure what these plot lines are for, because we see a bunch of different things, and she does a lot of stuff, and a lot of them just goes by as dreams. Uh, and I know that's what the story is about, but usually when we get a dream, at least I'm trying to see that it's interesting or it leads into a bigger point. And while it does lead to a bigger point, we spent so much time on it that the small point that it did make didn't really seem that interesting. It's okay, parts of it were great, parts of it were just boring, parts of it felt like they had meaning, but I just couldn't really see that and I really didn't find it interesting enough to dig deeper. And that's kind of how I feel about this. There's also the story that's not really a story, it's just at the beginning, at the end, and I think that this is the framing narrative of this story. That was cool, but the first time I read the beginning, I couldn't understand it at all. I have no idea what it was talking about, and I just kind of forgot about it. And then I came back at the end, I'm like, oh, is that, that what it's talking about? I'm like, oh, oh, now I understand. It's not that interesting. It's okay, okay, fine. I mean, if it was one page, cool. But it was like two, three, four pages. And that's kind of what I mean. It's not that stretched out, but it's stretched out enough that I kind of felt like, I didn't care. Now that I'm looking back, the fact that he thought of that is really cool. But just reading it in itself, going through the pages, it doesn't feel like it's worth the time. And then there's Nuala's story, which really doesn't affect much except for the end where it affects for like one second. And that that doesn't really matter either because it feels like it was a scapegoat for what should have been done. Uh, see, it's very complicated. Everything is interconnected. But Nuala overall, her story was cool, but it felt like her dwelling in her problem was just kind of painful, right? It wasn't very good. It wasn't very enjoyable but it was just kind of painful and I found that to be not that much fun. Every time we returned to her, I was just like, ah, can we, can we get a move on? Can we do something else? So she was in itself interesting. I just felt like her problem was dragging on for far longer than it was enjoyable. There's also Matthew's story and that was really cool because I am very interested in that personally. So I thought that would be awesome, awesome, awesome. And I don't know if anybody else would enjoy that, but I personally thought that was really cool because it's just personally, it that is the exact type of story that I love. But it's just one of those things. I don't know if other people would enjoy it because it doesn't matter. And it just kind of stretched on for longer than it should have been. And we got really no information out of it. And it didn't matter later, but not then. So we have a lot of setup and it's a, a lot of it isn't that good. We also get Rose Walker's story and I don't have to say much about this, but even now I can't really recall where it goes. I can't quite understand what it is. I think that the meaning of all these stories is to get to the last story, the main story, the main chunky part of it about how Sandman has affected others and how others have affected Sandman. That seems to be what the point of the story is. And it's so weird to me because I know that that's so cool. I know that in theory that's so cool. But in practice, a lot of these smaller stories about how Sandman affects other people and how Sandman is affected by people doesn't really do it for me. It's not as interesting as seeing Sandman himself and see him toil and turn and think about himself and think about the world. It seems like this is so separate from what the point of the story is, even though technically it is part of it, it doesn't need to be shown. Rose Walker in particular, her story really didn't go anywhere. It was just kind of like going back and seeing other uh, parts of the narrative of older Sandman novels and just remembering what went on, just forgetting stuff and then realizing, oh, that and that, that happened and wasn't that interesting, right? So that's what I mean. And then the Corthinian, he was pretty cool. I thought that he was enjoyable because every step of the journey seemed to bring something new and bring something interesting. And the relationship between Corthinian and the Raven was marvelously fun. It was really, really good and it was very short and to the point. And what he did overall involving, you know, Loki was really, really fun. I thought it was really cool and it, it didn't really do too much, but it was short and sweet and it worked. The plot point in itself was important to the story. So overall, I thought it was a lot of fun. And now for the overall story, which is the, the story of Sandman. Uh, this is one of those stories that is just 
brilliant. It's one of those stories that you, you cannot find anywhere else because no one can pull this off. You get a lot of bad with it, but a lot of good with it too. It, it, this story just absolutely shakes my idea of what is the story about, and I have no idea, uh, but this is the story that kind of grapples with it the most. And I think the best way to say it is it's about change. It's about the, the ancient and the set in stone being finally remolded. I had to go online and try to Google this and figure out what was going on, and the ending was generally vague. If you really say exactly what is happening out loud, then you'll understand what's going on. If you can understand it, and if you can understand the metaphor behind it, it just becomes so, so interesting. And I love it for that. So this story has the Sandman story, which is awesome, incredible, uh, amazing. This story in itself, maybe five stars, maybe five stars for sure. All the other stories average maybe two or three stars. So overall, I think I have to give this story a four stars. There's so, so much that is just bloated, that just feels so not as interesting as everything else. And also, especially the art. I didn't enjoy the art in this one. Everything felt like thick lines and, you know, some people can enjoy thick lines, but it feels like this story that is so delicate and so intricate uh, deserves differently. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below and subscribe if you want to see the final Sandman review, which is coming out soon. I will also be reviewing all of these Sandman novels that are extra. The two deaths one, uh, the Sandman uh, book 11, Sandman Overture, and the one Sandman novel thing. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it, it's really, really cool. And I hear it's really, really good. So I'm going to read that as well uh, in the coming time. And I am going to rank all the Sandman books very soon. So if you enjoy all that, please subscribe. Also, I have my Goodreads linked in the description down below. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.